The K2 Black Panther is one of the most advanced main battle tanks today. But also, it is one of the most expensive. Yes, the K2 embodies the state-of-art subsystems for excellent firepower, mobility and survivability. Yet, the real question is whether this tank is worth its cost. As the weapon detective, we are investigating the K2, the fascinating but questionable tank of South Korea. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel before we start and give us a thumbs up if you like our video. To be notified of our new video, please click the bell button. Also, you can now click the join button to support our channel. Many experts consider the K2 a next generation main battle tank. Indeed, it efficiently brings many state-of-art technologies together. But its design criteria have been controversial since the Second World War. We will mention these arguments in our analysis section later. First things first, let's look at the development history and the features of the K2. Since the 1953 Korean Armistice Agreement, North Korea and South Korea have undergone a miniature version of the Cold War. And they have prepared for a miniature version of a possible Third World War. Of course, the USA and China are the sides of the conflict. This fact might lead a full-scale Third World War. The rivalry between the Northern and Southern brothers of Korea paved the way for the development of the K-2. Until the 1980s, the backbone of the Republic of Korea Army's tank fleet was the M-47s and M-48s. These obsolete tanks were enough to some degree against the North Korean T-55s and T-62s. When North Korea introduced the Chanmaho, which is an improved, reverse-engineered version of the T-62 with a 115mm gun, South Korea began to modernize some of its m 48 with a 105mm gun. Also, Seoul initiated a joint main battle tank development program with the USA in 1979. The child of this program, the K-1, was introduced to the Republic of Korea Army service in 1987. It had a 105mm gun. North Korea answered this new threat with the Pong Pung Ho. This tank, developed in 1990s, was a reverse-engineered variant of the T-72 with a 125mm gun. It also embodied many advanced subsystems of the Russian T-80, T-90 and the Chinese Type 88. As an urgent solution, South Korea acquired 33 T-80Us between 1995 and 1997 as a partial payment of debts incurred during the Soviet era. Also, in 2001, South Korea began to put K-1A1 in service, which has a 120mm gun, to counter the Pong Pung Ho. Also, some previous K-1s have been upgraded to A1 standards. But all of these efforts were interim solutions. In 1993, Seoul had already tasked the Agency for Defense Development with the development of an indigenous modern tank. The new system would replace the M48s and supplement the K-1s. There were additional important factors which paved the way for the Seoul's self-reliance for such an ambitious program. First of all, as one of the favorite allies of the USA in the East, South Korea had enjoyed the Western technology transfers and license production agreements during the 1980s. Washington had not even made the unlicensed production of some military hardware an issue. Thanks to these favors, the South Korean military industrial capabilities had miraculously stepped up. Besides, in the 1980s, South Korea had a world-class civil industry which provided many skillful subcontractors, labor force and engineers. Additionally, all modern Western main battle tanks were designed for a war on the plain lands of Europe and the Middle East, whereas the Republic of Korea Army needed a tank which is suitable for the mountainous terrain of the peninsula. During the study phase, South Korea evaluated many new subsystems such as an unmanned turret or a 140mm gun. But after careful consideration, the army embraced a more conventional approach. After this study phase, the South Korean Agency for Defense Development decided to develop a tank which has similar design criteria with the French Leclerc. It would have advanced composite armor which reduces weight while increasing ballistic protection. The low combat weight with a high power engine would also increase speed, acceleration and maneuverability. The tank would have an autoloader. It would be fitted with a hard kill and soft kill active protection systems. The first prototype, named XK2, was completed in 2003. The serial production began in 2011. 
Initially, the Republic of Korea Army planned to accept the K-2 service in 2012. But due to problems with the domestic power pack, the tank was introduced two years later. So the first batch of 100 K-2s is equipped with the MTU-MT883 KA501 diesel engine and rank HSWL295TM transmission. The second batch of 106 K-2s are equipped with the locally developed Dozen DV27K diesel engine. But these tanks also have the ranks transmission. Initially, the Republic of Korea Army planned to acquire 600 K-2s. But due to high unit cost, the total order has reached only to 210 tanks until now. Seoul is considering the third batch of 54 K-2s. Yet, there is no official order. The three-person crew of the K-2 consists of a commander, driver and gunner. Its hull length is 7.5 meters. The tank is 10.8 meters long, 3.6 meters wide and 2.4 meters high. Its combat weight is 55 tons. The 1500 horsepower MTU-MT883KA501 diesel engine provides a maximum road speed of 70 km per hour. The range of the tank is 450 km. The K2 can negotiate 1 meter vertical steps, 2.74 meter trenches and it can afford to a depth of 1.2 meters. It has a 120 mm smoothbore main gun as well as one 12.7 mm and one 7.62 mm machine guns. Thanks to advanced composite armor technology, the K2 is only 4 tons heavier than the K1 but provides 70% higher ballistic protection. There are explosive reactive armor blocks on top of the turret against the threats that come from the aerial vehicles and artillery ammunition. The ballistic protection level of the tank is not officially declared, but it is known that the front armor can withstand the K279 armor-piercing rounds fired from the 120mm L55 gun. This round can penetrate 720mm thick armor when it is fired from K1's 120mm L44 gun. We can estimate that K279 can penetrate 800 to 850 mm thick armor when it is fired from the L55 gun. This gives us an important clue about the ballistic protection level. The soft kill active protection system enhances survivability. The K2 also has a radar warning receiver and radar jammer. Initially, South Korea planned to equip the tank with a hard kill active protection system. But to reduce unit costs, this plan was abandoned later. The turret has an electric drive. The K2 is fitted with an autoloader which can smoothly feed the gun even when the tank is shaken violently, so it can reach the rate of fire of 15 rounds per minute. The K2 can engage the moving targets on the move. It has an advanced fire control system which is coupled with an extremely high frequency radar on the frontal arc of the turret. The fire control system is capable of a lock-on mode which can acquire and track specific targets up to a range of 9,800 meters using a thermographic camera. The tank is supported by a laser rangefinder and wind sensor, as well as a trigger delay mechanism. When a tank moves on the rough terrain, oscillation of the barrel may cause temporary misalignment between the laser emitter at the top of the barrel and a sensor at the base. The K2's trigger delay mechanism ensures the round will be fired at the right time. So, the tank can achieve a high first shoot to kill rate while on the move. The CN08 can fire the KSTAM2 fire and forget guided anti tank munition, whose trajectory is curved, giving it a mortar or artillery like capability to strike targets taking cover behind obstacles. Also, this feature allows the K2 to attack without revealing itself while it is hiding behind obstacles. The KSTAM2 has a range of 8000 meters. The K2 is equipped with a highly advanced hydropneumatic suspension system. Thanks to this system, the tank can elevate its main gun up to 24 degrees. So, it can engage an enemy tank positioned at the high ground or a low-flying aerial target. Also, by using its hydropneumatic suspensions, the K2 can reduce its ground clearance to reduce its silhouette or get superior handling over roads. By increasing the ground clearance, the tank gains higher maneuverability over rough terrain. The K2 has a dynamic track tensioning system. This system dramatically reduces the risk of throwing a track even in the most extreme situations and maintains optimum tension through all maneuvers. The cross-country speed of the K2 is 48 km per hour. Currently, 
Even the most advanced gun tracking systems on the land vehicles cannot track a target which travels at a speed of 40 km per hour. This feature makes the K2 a hard to hit target. Today, South Korea is working on an advanced variant of the tank called the K2 PIP. This variant will have an active in-arm suspension unit which improves maneuverability and first shoot to kill capability on the move. The K2 PIP will be fitted with a hard kill active protection system and additional non-explosive reactive armor packages. Also, South Korea is evaluating the fitting the tank with an electrothermal chemical gun which will significantly increase firepower. As we mentioned before, the condition in the Korean Peninsula is highly similar to the First Cold War. South Korea is preparing a war against a massive armored punch and artillery storm of North Korea. There are two alternatives here. One, to build up a massive army, which would be equivalent to Korean people's army in size. Two, to get balance with superior weapon systems. Seoul has chosen the second way. The Western main battle tanks, like the M1 Abrams, Leopard 2 and Challenger were designed based on the concepts of the 1970s. They had bigger guns, thicker armors and more powerful engines. But in the 1980s, France developed a new concept. The child of this concept, the Leclerc, had good survivability with its advanced modular composite armor and active protection systems. This tank's high mobility improved not only its combat capability, but also its survivability. According to French combat doctrine, the Leclerc should have been able to deal with at least four Soviet tanks before it was knocked out. So, its firepower and rate of fire should have had to be high. So, the South Koreans adopted this concept and perfected it. Well, why didn't they embrace the concept of the Israeli Merkava 4? The Merkava 4 is designed to fight on the plain desert, which has no particular water obstacles. But the South Koreans needed a tank to fight on uneven terrain which is divided by many rivers. The stationary defense against the massive armored punch and artillery storm of the Korean People's Army would be hard and costly. The mobile defense concept was more suitable for the Republic of Korea Army. So, high speed was essential and a colossal main battle tank like the Merkava 4 was not suitable for the South Korean needs. Why did South Korea choose the 120mm gun over the 140mm? Because it doesn't need it. A 120mm 55 caliber gun would be enough to deal with foreseeable threats. There was no need to reduce the amount of ammunition for pointlessly high armor penetration capability. But there is another debate here, which has continued since the Second World War. The contenders of this debate are quality and quantity. Many tank experts claim that Germany made a big mistake by depending on technological superiority with the Panzers, which were hard and costly to produce. According to them, the Allies won the war thanks to more modest but easy to produce and low cost tanks such as M4 Sherman and T-34. If this is the case, the North Korean tank design criteria are more sound. But there is a catch here. A possible second Korean war would be similar to the first one. Without the USA and China, this war would not break out. So, the K2s of South Korea are perfect tanks to hold the first wave of a possible North Korean surprise attack. They would gain valuable time for the US reinforcements. In this perspective, the K2 would fulfill its designated job perfectly. The advanced features make the K2 a rising star in the international market. Many countries which are seeking a new advanced main battle tank, like Norway and Poland, have already declared their interest in the Black Panther. Despite some setbacks on its power pack, we can say that the K2 is a successful tank and worth its high cost. Thanks for watching our video. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and give us a thumbs up if you liked our video. To be notified of our new videos, please click the bell button. Also, you can now click the join button to support our channel.